Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a problem from the Bosnia and Herzegovina team selection test 2011 problem number three. I suggest you try this nice problem out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally an hour to an hour and a half, not more than three and a half hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 10 minutes. Like put your first ideas out on paper and now without further ado, let's begin. So, whoa, what do we have here? And this, these are distinct, sure, put into these two sequences. Okay, so these numbers form 1 through 2n, and then we must show that this is always a perfect square. Okay, so what do we have? Well, there's two things we can go and do. One is if we have no idea what to do, we can look at cases for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So on and so forth until we get some idea and then look at all the different ways we can combine these numbers. And actually, you know, let's actually do that because this is a num problem number three. Let's choose, say, n equals two, right? So for n equals two, for n equals one, we just don't have a lot of variety to do. So we can, let's put one and two here. So we'll have one, two, and then we'll have three, four here. So this will be so this will be B1, B2, this will be A1, A2, because that's the ordering that they have. And then we have, actually I should put it more like 4, 3, just so there, like it doesn't matter, but 4, 3. Because this is an increasing sequence, this is a decreasing one. And now I have W will be equal to 4 minus 1, which is 3 plus 3 minus 2. Okay, and uh, that finishes up that problem, right? Don't, that finishes up like the idea is now W is 4. So let's do them differently. Let's do, now if we switch 2 and 3, like if we did 1 and 3 and 4 and 2, then we would again get a 4, so nothing would really change. Now 1 and 4, and here, if we had 2 and 3, that would be more interesting. So we had 3, 2. And then we would have w is equal to, well, we'd have 3 minus 1. And then we'd need to switch these around. We'd have 4 minus 2, and we'd get a 2 plus 2 is 4. Here we get a 1 plus 3 is 4. Here a 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, there's a switching going on here. And... That's 1 and 4. Now, say we had a 1 was 2, 3. Then we would have 4, 1. Okay, that would be that would be the same thing that we had here. If we had a 2, 4, we would have here a 3, 1. That is something that is new, that is different. And we'd have 2 minus 3, 4 minus 1. Again, we'd have a 4. So it seems like no matter how we switch them for 2, we keep getting a 4. Does it? So is W always the same? Maybe that's one hypothesis. N is 2 is like a little bit small. There could be some edge case with N equals 2. So what about N equals 3? What, what number will we get? And for 3 we would get, say, say I'll just like put, so 6, 5, 4 in the decreasing one and in the increasing one we'd have 1, 2, 3. So we'd have 5 plus 3 plus 1, which is 9. Okay, we're getting n squared in both of these. For n equals 1, we'd get 1. And given that this is n of somewhat like a linear combination of n, I'm expecting to get a square that's in n. So we're getting n squared in every single one of these cases. It seems like that's in line with expectation. Now let's actually like see what's happening here. So at some point, if A1 is bigger than B1, then this will always just like remain the same. Like this will always be AI minus BI. And then if A1 is actually greater than B1, then A1 needs to be N plus one, this is N plus two, and this is N, N minus one, like it forces what? B1 is. If Bn is greater than An, then this is forced to be 2n, so on and so forth. 
And if that is not the case, then at some point there's a switch that happens with these signs, right? That's sort of what's happening. At some point we will have that if B1 isn't bigger than, isn't, uh, what's it called? If B1 isn't smaller than A1, then it's bigger. Then this is bigger. Now, is this bigger? Is this bigger? At some point, we may get a smaller thing. So now I invite you with these couple of ideas to pause the, and try to solve the problem for the next five to 15 minutes. Push it forward, push it forward. And here's the next step. Let me just clean this up. So let's now do this thing where if, so if A1, if A1 is bigger than B1, then we will have the sum till n, right, equals one. Now this from here, it follows that AI is bigger than BI. And it follows that because AI is bigger than A1, is bigger than B1, is bigger than BI. And from here, the sum W, this number will be equal to AI minus BI. And furthermore, we know that then this is the sum of the AIs minus the sum of the BIs. Um, do we actually know? This actually forces what these numbers are. This actually just says that we have an ordering that we have a n minus a n is greater than a n minus 1 is greater than a 1 is greater than b 1 is greater than all the way till b n because these are two numbers 1 through 2 n this means that this is going to be equal a i is equal to n plus i b i is equal to n minus i right n minus i or n plus 1 minus i n minus i plus 1 but then this sum turns into the sum from i equals 1 till n n plus i minus n plus i minus 1, which is the sum 2i minus 1 from i is equal to 1 to n, which is n squared. We can prove this via induction. And there are actually many ways to prove this. A cool sort of like geometric proof is, see for free, this is 1 plus 3 plus 5, and then you have a plus 7, and so on and so forth. Uh, but I, I think just proving this by induction, or you can take um, how many numbers do we have here? You're com going to be combining 2n minus 1 with 1, 2n minus 3 with 3, and then 2n minus, what do we have in the middle? Like you can look at a modulo, if n is 1 or 0 modulo 2, break it up into two cases, and then you'd maybe have what you're combining because you might have to odds. Or actually you can just like write this as if this is s, then s is equal to 1 plus 3 plus 2i mi 2n minus 1. And s is also equal to 2n minus 1 plus 2n minus 3 plus da -da 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 plus 1. We sum them up. 2s is equal to 2n plus 2n plus 2n. How many times? 1 to n times, how do I know it's n times? Well, this is 2 times 1 minus 1, 2 times 2 minus 1, so on and so forth. So we have this is 2n squared. In other words, s is equal to n squared. But now let's assume that this isn't the case, right? And now at some point, if a1, and also let's assume that if, if bn is greater than a n, we also have this. We also have this case. So let's assume both of those aren't the case. And that means that A1 is going to be less than B1. And we're going to have AN is going to be greater than BN. Right? And now at some point, what must happen? Pause for five minutes to answer. What happened? must happen at some point? And the answer is, if you have AK is less than BK, because you have this other sign, at some point you must have AK plus one needs to be bigger than BK plus one. And then from here, it follows that because this is less than AK plus two, 
by this, and this is greater than bk plus 2 by this, then we'll have ak plus 2 is greater than bk plus 2. But it's, uh, for some k, there must be this switch that happens, right? That's what must happen for some k. And then this whole sum evaluates to what? Pause for five minutes and push the problem further now, because the value is two, and we have this sum evaluates to this thing. And now, what is this equal to? Well, we don't know where the k's are. Let's get rid of either the ai's or the b. Let's get rid of the ai's that are less than k, or the ai's that are greater than k. All right, let's do that. And how can we do that? Well. Let's write this as, so this is bi minus ai. We know that the sum of all of these numbers, sum of a1 plus a2 plus an plus b1 plus b2 plus bn is equal to 2n, 2n times 2n plus 1 over 2, which is this. And now we can write this sum as this will be the sum of b1 plus b2 plus all the way till bk plus the sum of ak plus 1 plus ak plus 2 this thing we have here plus a n and then it will be minus bk plus 1 minus bk plus 2 actually let's do it in parentheses all the way till bn plus a1 plus all the way till ak and now, what can we do? Well, I invite you here to pause for another five minutes. If you not come to this place, what can you do here? How can you rewrite this? And the answer is, well, if I just add here, add and subtract bk plus one plus bk plus two, plus all the way till bn. And I also add a1 plus all the way till an, and then I subtract that then I'll have W will be equal to n times 2n plus 1 minus 2 times this sum, a1 through ak plus bk plus 1 through bn. And now for us to have n squared, what does this sum need to be, right? So what do we need? We need n squared. We have n squared plus n. So we need this sum to be equal to 1 plus 2 all the way till n. And I invite you here to pause for another 10 minutes and ask yourself, will we get that? Or has our hypothesis been wrong? And it's like playing around with small cases. And the answer is, our hypothesis has been okay. And here's why. What, is it, what does this mean? Let's actually write this down more fully, because here we have numbers from a1 through ak. So we have a1, a2, ak. These numbers are less than ak plus 1, less than ak plus 2, less than an. And also, this one's less than bk. So AK is the biggest one of them, and it's less than BK. So these numbers are also, all of them are less than BK plus one, all the way to actually BK minus one, all the way till B1. So that's what these numbers are less than. In a similar way, the number BN plus one, what is it less than? It's less than actually BK plus one. It's less than ak plus 1. ak plus 1 is less than ak plus 2, so it's also less than ak plus 2. And these numbers are all of these, bk plus 2, bn, all the way till bn. Because bk plus 1 is the biggest one of these. And this number is less than this. And this number is less than this, so they're less than ak plus 2, all the way till an. And they're less, less than, what was it here? Well, they're less than bk 
from bk minus 1 all the way till b1. So here we have n numbers, and we have that these n numbers that we have, the ones that we have here, are less than these other n numbers. They are all different, and together they form 1 through 2n. What does that mean? Well, that means that these n numbers must be the numbers 1 through n. You might ask me, well, how, we, how do I, wait a second, how do I prove this? Well, you could prove, say, assume they're not. Then from the numbers 1 through n, n, one of these is not one of those numbers, so one of them is greater than, greater than or equal to n plus 1. However, then one of these numbers needs to be that missing number between 1 and n. And you get a contradiction right away. Because you'll get a number here is then greater than a number on this side. Which is false, because every number on this side is greater than every number on this side. And that's the way you can really like prove this. So I think in many cases you can just state this. Again, depends on the competition, where you're from. This is a way to prove it. And now, what does this mean? These numbers, this sum actually is going to equal n times 2n plus 1 minus 2. We don't also know which order, like a1 could be equal to 1, and then bn could be 2, and then a2 could be 3, and then a4 could be 4, and actually a2 could be 3, a3 could be 4, and then b. b n minus 1 could be equal to 5, and so, like, they could switch around. But that doesn't matter, because no matter what, we're going to, we care about their sum. And now we have, this is going to be 2n squared plus n, minus 2 times n times n plus 1 over 2, which is minus n, which is 2n squared plus n, minus n squared minus n, which is equal to n squared. And so we have proved that w here is equal to n squared. We need to prove it's a perfect square, and that is what we've done. This finishes up this nice, you know, combinatorics, I would call it, problem. You can also call it algebra, combinatorics, I think, uh, between algebra and combinatorics. It's a combinatorial algebra problem. And this finishes up, and as always, thanks for problem solving.